Hello everyone, welcome to Digital Communication Tutorials. In this video, I am going to discuss on the topic Differential Pulse Code Modulation. Differential Pulse Code Modulation is a technique of analog to digital signal conversion that is particularly applied to voice and video signals. The reason for this is that these signals that is voice and video signals exhibit a high correlation between adjacent samples. As an example, let us consider the encoded PCM wave as shown in the figure 1 here. We note that each sample amplitude is encoded by using 3 bits. For example, this sample amplitude is encoded as 010, the next one is encoded as 100, the next one is 101 and so on. Please note these 3 samples have the exact same code word, so are the next 3 samples as in the diagram here. Further, in an interesting note, we find that the neighboring sample amplitudes differ only by a very small value. In other words, the neighboring samples are said to have high correlation. The meaning of this high correlation is that in an average sense, the signal does not change rapidly from one sample to the next with the result that the difference between the adjacent samples has a variance that is considerably smaller than the variance of the signal itself. When these highly correlated samples are encoded using the standard PCM, the resulting signal will contain redundant information. For example, if you consider these three samples having the exact same code word, if I have to transmit these three samples, then I will have to transmit 110 thrice. So, the same information is transmitted three times, which causes redundancy. If this redundancy can be reduced, then the overall bitrate will decrease and the number of bits required to transmit a sample will also reduce. If we incorporate this modification to the standard PCM technique, then we will have a new technique which is called as differential pulse code modulation. Let us now talk about DPCM. DPCM works on the principle of prediction. That is, the value of the present sample is predicted from the previous samples. Please note, the prediction may not be exact, but it is very close to the actual sample value. Now, if we know a sufficient part of a redundant signal, we may use linear prediction to predict the rest of the signal or at least make the most probable estimate. In particular, if we know the past behavior of the signal up to a certain point in time, then it is possible to make some reference about its future values. This in fact forms the idea behind the success of DPCM system. Let us now consider a baseband signal X of t which is sampled at the rate fs equals to 1 by ts to create a sequence of correlated samples that are 1 ts seconds apart as shown in the diagram here. Let this sequence be denoted by x of nts. So, this is the sequence of samples generated by sampling the input signal x of t at a rate fs. Now, here n takes on the integer values. Let this sequence be given to the dpcm transmitter which is shown in the diagram 1 here. Now, in this scheme, the input to the quantizer is a signal which is the difference between the unquantized sample x of nts and a prediction of it denoted by x cap of nts. I can now relate these three variables by writing the equation as e of nts equals x of nts minus x cap of nts, where x of nts as we already have said is the unquantized input sample and x cap of nts is the prediction of x of nts. Now, this prediction value that is x cap of n t s is produced by using a predictor whose input consists of a quantized version of the input signal x of n t s. Let us now come back to the DPCM transmitter and verify this. So, you can see the prediction which is x cap of n t s is produced by using a predictor which is shown here whose input consists of the quantized version of the input signal. So, you see the error signal is E of NTS and the quantized version of the error signal is V of NTS. So, V of NTS and X cap of NTS are added together to create the input to the predictor. 
Coming back to the difference between X of NTS and X cap of NTS, the difference signal E of NTS is also called as the prediction error because this is the amount by which the predictor fails to predict the input exactly. The difference signal E of NTS is then quantized to create another signal which is denoted as V of NTS. The quantizer output V of NTS is then encoded and then transmitted through the channel. Let us now move on to the mathematical analysis of the DPCM system. Let the quantizer be characterized as a nonlinear function Q. The quantizer output is represented as V of NTS. Let us go back and see in the diagram here. You see the quantizer output is represented as V of NTS and this is equals to quantization function applied on E of NTS. So, I can relate these two as the equation shown V of NTS which is the quantizer output equals to quantization function applied on the quantizer input which is E of NTS. Upon applying the quantization function, we can write this as E of NTS plus Q of NTS, where Q of NTS is the error that is produced by the quantization process. So, the output of the quantizer differs from the input of the quantizer by the quantization error. So, this is about the quantizer output. Let us now come back to the diagram and see what is the predictor input. Now, as per the diagram here, you can see the predictor input which is U of NTS is obtained by adding the quantizer output V of NTS with the predictor output X cap of NTS. That is, I can now write U of NTS as X cap of NTS plus V of NTS. This is shown in equation 3 here. Now, let us substitute equation 2 which is for V of NTS into equation 3 in this particular spot. So, we will now get a new equation as U of NTS equals X cap of NTS plus E of NTS plus Q of NTS. However, by referring equation 1, let us go back and see equation 1 now which is E of NTS is equals to X of NTS minus X cap of NTS. So, I can write X cap of NTS plus E of NTS is equals to X of NTS. So, I can substitute X cap of NTS plus E of NTS as X of NTS in our equation 4. That is, these two terms add up to give X of NTS. So, equation 4 is now modified to U of NTS is equals to X of NTS plus Q of NTS. Now, by observing equation 5, we note that irrespective of the properties of the predictor, the quantized signal at the predictor input which is U of NTS always differs from the original signal which is X of NTS by an amount equal to the quantization error which is denoted by Q of NTS. That is about the transmitter of DPCM. Let us go back to the diagram once again. You see we have the input sample which is represented as X of NTS. Then we have the predictor output which is denoted by X cap of NTS and the difference between these two is the error signal denoted by E of NTS which also forms the quantizer input. Now, when quantizer is applied on this signal, we will obtain the quantizer output signal represented by V of NTS which is equal to E of NTS plus the quantization error. Additionally, the input to the predictor is the output of the quantizer plus the predicted value of the X of NTS which is X cap of NTS here. Finally, we will be encoding the quantizer output and then represent it in terms of a waveform which in fact becomes the DPCM waveform and this will be transmitted through the channel. Let us now move on to the DPCM receiver. The DPCM receiver consists of a decoder at the input to reconstruct the quantized error signal which is V of NTS. Please note the input of the decoder is the transmitted output assuming the channel noise is absolutely zero. So, this will be the input of decoder and assuming a proper decoding the output of the decoder will be the quantized error signal which is V of NTS. So, let us come back to the diagram and you can assume here this as B of NTS or the DPCM waveform and this is V of NTS. Further, we also note that the receiver also consists of a predictor 
which is very similar to the one present at the transmitter. In simple words, the predictor at the receiver works exactly like how a predictor at the transmitter works. Therefore, the output of the predictor is once again x cap of NPS because that is what we have seen at the transmitter as well. So, the output of the predictor is x cap of NPS and the same is applicable for the receiver as well. Now, the decoder output is V of NPS and the predictor output is x cap of NPS and these are added to create an estimate of the transmitted signal. Now, for time being, let us assume the estimate of the transmitted signal be represented as x dash of NTS. So, I can write x dash of NTS as the predictor output which is x cap of NTS plus the decoder output which is V of NTS. Now, from our figure 1 that is of the transmitter, you will note that V of NTS plus x cap of NTS is equals to U of NTS. So, we state that the output of the DPCM receiver is in fact the input of the predictor at the transmitter which is U of NTS. However, by looking back into figure 1 that is the transmitter, U of NTS can also be written as U of NTS is equals to, let me go back to what is X cap of NTS, X cap of NTS is X of NTS minus E of NTS plus V of NTS retained as it is. Now, looking into these two terms, you see this is the input to the quantizer and this is the output of the quantizer. The difference between these two is the quantization error that is denoted by Q of NTS. So, we can now conclude that the receiver output which is equal to U of NTS differs from the original input signal X of NTS only by a value equal to the quantization error Q of NTS. Please note, this conclusion is made based on the assumption that the channel noise is 0. Right. So, that is about the discussion on the DPCM receiver as well. Let us now move on and write an equation for the output signal to noise ratio for the DPCM system. We know that the SNR output can be represented as sigma x square divided by sigma q square where sigma x square is the variance of the original input signal x of NTS which is assumed to be having a mean value equal to 0. Whereas, sigma q square is the variance of the quantization error which is represented by q of NTS. Rewriting equation 8 by introducing a new term sigma e square, I can write it as sigma x square divided by sigma e square multiplied by sigma e square divided by sigma q square. Now, sigma x square divided by sigma e square is denoted by gp whereas sigma e square divided by sigma q square is denoted as SNRP. Now, let us see what is gp and SNRP here which is given in this slide. SNRP denotes the prediction error to quantization noise ratio. Please note sigma e square is the prediction error and sigma q square is the variance of the quantization noise. So, sigma e square divided by sigma q square is called the prediction error to quantization noise ratio. On the other hand, we have GP which in fact denotes the prediction gain produced by the differential quantizer scheme which in fact is DPCM and this is given as sigma x square divided by sigma e square. We already know sigma x square is the variance of the input signal x of NTS and sigma e square is nothing but the prediction error. The quantity GP when it is greater than unity represents the gain in signal to noise ratio that is due to the differential quantization scheme. Now, we know that for any given baseband signal, the variance sigma x square is fixed. So that the prediction gain GP is maximized only by minimizing the variance sigma e square of the prediction error. That is, if you want to increase the efficiency of the DPCM system, then you are supposed to make GP greater than 1. Now, for making this greater than 1, we identify sigma x square is always fixed. So, the only possible way of making GP greater than 1 is by minimizing the prediction error which is sigma e square. Therefore, when designing the DPCM system, the objective should be to design the predictor so as to minimize the variance of the prediction error which is sigma e square. 
that is about the discussion on the differential pulse code modulation technique in my next video i'll be discussing on delta modulation if you like this video kindly press that like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos on digital communication thank you for watching have a good day